Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano Lives a Dun. I am once again Shadow Fury 33, your host, and this is the last replay for tonight. Ikins versus Svatopluk on Titan Duel. This is This is a map that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It's it's a map that's been played quite a lot. Svatopluk, interestingly going for cloaky bots. Icons going for light vehicles. Not a surprising but yeah, cloaky bots are not what I'd expect. And hey, I was gonna point this out. There's actually a weird so the way that Zero K's camera, or rather the, the combined overhead free camera can work, there's a mode that allows you to go to essentially a smoothed mesh so that it doesn't... For example, this here, I can just move along here and it's not going to change much. Normally it tries to maintain the same distance from the ground, but for big pits like this, you don't really need to be shifting down into it. It's really, really distracting when that happens. Not a big deal on Titan Duel, much bigger deal on maps like Ravaged, but... It's just kind of a big deal, because these little pits here would be really annoying when they get to the center of camera, and they are not even noticeable. It's a really nice feature. For whatever reason, though, the southeast side of the map has a weird bump on the smooth mesh, but there's nothing at all in the mesh. So there's, I just don't see anything here that should make that happen. But it's weird. Just for whatever reason, whatever interpolation method they're using, it just causes there to be this spurious hill on the smooth mesh that does not exist in reality. Actually, I guess... Oh, you know what? Okay, it, it, it exists on both sides. Okay, my guess is that it's doing something here, and then there's a ringing phenomenon. If you know about how various like polynomial interpre interpolation functions go, like not just linear, but like cubic or hermite or especially sync interpolation, you get you can get ringing artifacts. So it's probably that these two hills is trying to interpolate between them, between this ridge and this ridge, and then it's the function it's using causes it to end up creating the spurious hill because it's going up and like it's going like up and then down and then up and then down and then up because it's creating a it's creating a function that's causing basically it's interpolating in something that's not there because of the positions of those things really bizarre also i like the cam height changes they're really handy a lot of the time i'm not using spring cam there are too many things Spring Cam does not do that UFC does do. Not to, not to mention Spring Cam is this really weird zooming behavior. Like zoom centering behavior. At least it did. But yeah, no. Thanks. Sorry, someone in the chat is suggesting I use a different camera, which I'm not using. So yeah, Svatopluk. So yeah, sorry, it's Cloaky versus Light Vehicles. I got really distracted by that. That was a mistake. So right now, Svatopluk started out with pretty standard Glaive harassment. Didn't really do much damage, though. Icons was pretty on point with dealing with that. Icons counter harassment coming in with five Scorchers. This could be really dangerous. Actually, this probably is really... What is there for her? No, there's almost nothing. Oh, sheesh. Yeah, there's, there's a couple scythes. That's about it. This is... If those size don't deal enough damage, Svatopluk's going to lose their commander. And with the economy they have right now, that's a problem. Unfortunately, Iken's being way too timid. Oh, man, if Iken's die, four is enough. Or five was enough, actually. That would be enough for the Lotus. But no, Iken's being way too timid. Like, Iken's, you are going for a combat. You're going for seven Scorchers. You have... You're being super aggressive. You need to follow through on that. Pretty much a core principle about RTS games. If you try to do something, if you start doing something, if you start building towards something and you don't follow through on it, you're going to end up behind. I mean, you know, there's room for feints and such, but if you do something and don't follow through, you've wasted those resources. On the other hand, Icons, like, Svartopluck expanding is expanding slowly, so yeah, that does help Icons at the moment. But still, I think Icons is being way too timid. They had, they nearly had a free commander kill right there. It would have been a bit of a micro for it. It would have been a bit of a micro fight, yes. But that's not terrible. That can be dealt with. Especially now that all the sides have been revealed. But yeah, it would have been dealt with. But now it's harder and harder. At least there's some distraction going on. But I mean, Svatopluk has full knowledge of their base area. Like they know that there's stuff there. Or they, they should. Not sure why radar dots aren't showing up, but yeah. They'll know about this stuff. Icons, however, not paying as much attention, unfortunately. They know there are sides. 
You need to pay attention or get Wolverines. One of the two. Doesn't really matter which one they do, but they need to get one of the two. I don't know why Spider-Buck... This is really weird. Why are they going for sides all the time? Like, who goes for sides? Seriously. If Icons gets a Wolverine or two, they can just shut down the sides wholesale. <clears throat> I don't really understand why they're doing this. I don't know why Icons isn't countering it. I mean, the level of Ravager isn't a bad idea, but I don't know why they aren't building up Wolverines to counter this. Or paying attention to their slashers when they're inside enemy territory as they get chopped to pieces because they were not paying any attention at all. Like, you know there are sides. I realize it's tough to deal with, but if you know their sides, there are sides. And it's just sides. Nothing but sides. Svatoplik has built nothing but sides since that first glaive. Like, first couple glaives and then sides ever since. And that's why I'm suggesting going for Wolverines, because Wolverine Claw Mines just, they decloak scythes. Which means that you're not fighting on your opponent's terms. That's the problem. If you're fighting in your opponent's terms, then you're in a bad spot. You don't want to be fighting in your opponent's terms, you want to be fighting on your own terms. Not to mention Icons is not producing as much as they could be, but they're, they're on that, they know. Getting the Caretaker up to quickly set that straight. Yeah, I just don't get why this... why this is. Why Ikens is letting Spadabluk just choose when they fight and getting the first hits in. Like so. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Because Spadabluk can just wait until they have enough size to deal with whatever Ikens throws at them, and Ikens can't deal with them before Spadabluk gets the first hit in. Get some Wolverines! That's what you have to deal with. That, that is the tool to deal with this. I just don't get this. Like, I don't understand the strategy at all. I think Icons just doesn't know what to do when they see sides. No, they're not mentioning, but yeah, it's like... Just... I don't know. I just don't understand the motivation here. Like, the levelers are okay, but the sides aren't that weak. Like, they have 800 health each, so the levelers only deal like 200 damage a shot. So that's four shots to get rid of scythes. They're not glaives. <laughs> They're not glaives or scorchers. They, they take a lot of damage before they die. Okay, I guess I can see the rapiers. The rapiers aren't a terrible idea. The point of the rapiers more or less being, well, if we're not going to fight the scythes, we might as well bypass them completely. Just hit everything else and either force Spotiplex to respect us and build something other than scythes, or get hit and get hit hard, because they have nothing to deal with rapiers. But I don't know. Spotiplik just seems to be going in for what they're pretty sure is the kill. And essentially it's going to come down to whether or not Icons can deal enough damage to force Spotiplik's hand, and it looks like they have. Spotiplik is in fact moving back. They are not going to be shifting away. They're actually going to return back to the pace, try to defend this. Which should be fairly successful, because levelers don't deal a huge amount of damage. But if... Yeah, if they can do that... Well, okay. That's something. Good attacks coming here from Spotted Nice harassment. I mean... It's definitely respectable there. It's just that... Icons does have the rapiers coming in. Spadabook does not see it coming. They're building lotuses everywhere. They aren't building razors. They aren't building defenders. Just lotuses. So, this isn't going to work too well. These these sides will be able to deal a lot of damage. I mean, the rapiers might have... It might force their hand. Like, Icons looks like they are moving out to defend, because they... Well, they aren't aware of it yet, but they will be now. Or pretty soon, at least, that this... They are coming. I mean, the Scythes are here.
Yeah, Ikens just keeps doing this. They're putting their forces in enemy territory and then leaving them to get killed. Well, it's not a bad shot, though. I mean, getting rid of these solar plants is not a bad idea, but even then... There aren't many easy paths they can go that... This leveler's gonna die. Like, Ikens is not paying enough attention to save this level. This... Nope, neither of them. They were not paying enough attention. Not sure what they were doing instead, but... And these rapiers, what are they waiting for? Are they waiting for a certain number of rapiers? Because... I mean, they kind of need to attack. I can, I think I can might be trying to wait until those scythes reveal themselves and then hit with the rapiers, but that doesn't make any sense. You want to have the rapiers hit where the scythes aren't. The whole point is that the scythes can't hit air. So the entire motivation would be to hit what the is hit around the base, and the scythes can't defend against it. Forcing your opponent to split between scythes and gremlins, in this case. Although, admittedly, it's cloaky bot. That's actually not that great. Like, gremlins aren't that much better because they're still cloaked. But still, it's like, just, just move! Get these over here and dealing damage. Why is that so hard? It's like you have stuff to kill with. Why are you not why are you not attacking the base? That's see, clearly this is what Icons is trying to do, is bait out the scythe and then kill them with rapiers. Which that's not what the scythes are there to do. And Spaderpluck now switching their production over. Oh, switching over to Gremlins, but yeah, it's like. Now they just build a razor. That's the Point. That's the problem. Is that they can get a razor, and Icons isn't attacking. Like Icons isn't smashing up everything, and now they're gonna move away because Icons is playing super timid. They are playing. They're building a bunch of army. They aren't exp expanding a huge amount. But they're making a huge army, not including Wolverines, which would basically counter the sides outright. But they're making a huge army, and then not attacking with it, especially not when they'd have the timing and positioning to do so. Before the razors get built, for instance, just go around and deal with all those metal extractors. Just kill as much as can be killed, forcing the sides to move back or forcing the hand to build stuff other than sides. Incidentally, this is another situation where Wolverines would do well in getting rid of, of entrenched defenses. Like, Icons just, I don't think they're really thinking about what they have in their factory, and that's a common thing to do, but yeah, it's just. Building a shield by factory. Dorsh pointing out outlaws might be a nice idea. Maybe that's what Icons has in mind, using outlaws to clear out the sides. Eh. Outlaws aren't bad, but they don't clear out defenses as well, so you're only killing one bird with that stone. And they're not that powerful. I mean, the thing is, yeah, okay, they'll slow down the sides and they'll deal some damage. They don't deal that much damage. But that's what's being built. Yeah, they only deal like 20 damage. The slow is the main thing, but the sides can just come in and chop them up when you're dealing with 14 or 15 sides. That's a lot of sides. I just consider the sheer number of sides being thrown at them. Yeah, sure, outlaws slow them down, but that's not enough. That's not very much. I mean, as you can see, the Ravagers are doing a better job just with missing shots. Outlaws are just too slow and too too inflexible in what they can do, and they're going to end up being too, way too close to the sides. Wolverines, on the other hand, set up claw mines everywhere. The sides walk around the map, they end up getting revealed by claw mines, getting hit by claw mines and damaged, and if there's follow-up forces nearby, they get torn apart, and if not, at least Icons can keep an eye on Spadaplik's movements. At this point, though, Icons can't. Even with the outlaw, it doesn't really work that well. Sorry, it just doesn't. I can sort of see the motivation. I just don't agree with it. Doesn't it doesn't cause map doesn't have map control. Doesn't have much to get rid of sides without essentially baiting them out. Like it's still Spotiplik getting the initiative. So I don't really see the point. Even and despite this, I mean, Dorsh pointing out the size of the map, but no, the size of the map isn't that big. Especially when you consider the front line is this area mostly. I mean, you just have Wolverines. Because the thing is, Svadaplik is probably going to be going towards where Icon's forces are. So if you have Wolverines mining the area around that, then Svadaplik's sides get revealed. And if you're worried about positioning, you just set it up in a few key choke points. Like, this right here is a key choke point. This is another key choke point. 
This is another key choke point. You just set it along the line of that key choke point. And basically, as battles get fought as well, you can just not even worry about it. Just battles get fought, and then more mines get laid, and the sides get revealed progressively. The point is that Spidoplik then has to respect that and change up their production. The point isn't necessarily so much to kill the sides, it's just to command some respect. I mean, Spidoplik has built some other things, but still. Mostly sides. Because Icons is not for Svadaflik to respect them. I haven't built anything that's really made us that, oh yeah, I gotta worry about, like, my sides aren't gonna be any good. I mean, it's kind of the moment of truth right now, but those rapiers are not doing enough good, and I think this is gonna be game. So I don't really see... Even with the shield bot setup, I don't see that doing much good. Especially when you consider that the Zeus attack will come in and deal a bunch of damage here. There is a Felon as well, which drains the shield. I mean, the shields aren't going to be any good against the sides. There's that. But yeah, this is just not working out that well. I mean, Icon's dealing a bit of damage, harassing a little bit around, finally not being so timid. But I don't understand the shield ball. Especially, you know, I mean, the south side is so important too, but it's like... Yeah, there's all these units that just eat up Felon... or eat up Felon Charge. But the problem is, if they the longer Icons waits, the more this gets fortified. Spotify will end up just taking the entire thing, reclaiming all this, like, gotta be a thousand metal. Two thousand metal! Two thousand metal right here from that battle! That's a lot of metal to be reclaimed. It was all, like, how many... Nine workers here? Yeah, that's... An extra 100 metal per second for the next 20 seconds. Svadaplik has this in the bag. Icons has just not been doing enough. And why are they moving forward? What the hell? Move back. Yeah, Icons just has not been active enough. Like, 0k, like every other RTS game, require, relies a lot on timings. The difference between 0k and something like StarCraft is that the timings aren't anywhere near as prescribed. I mean, they're really dependent on the situation of the game at hand. But still... Your opponent's going to be doing things, and there's a limited time to deal with what they're doing before they're just able to get away with anything, even if it's risky. So I don't really understand why Icons is being so timid. Timidity loses you games. Timidity means your opponent gets away with things they shouldn't get away with, has no reason to respect you, and then just ends up steamrolling with a giant army that they shouldn't have been able to build in the first place. Not to mention the shield ball thing. We've already seen with the... And it's pointed out by one of the spectators. We've already seen with the Thunderbirds, they're already there. There are already answers to the shield ball as it is. Granted, that's kind of answers to everything, but still... The answer exists. The Vandals will help, but the Shield Ball will still get stunned out before the Thunderbirds die. So there's at least one more stunning before everything goes away. Before the Thunderbirds are no longer a problem. What does Thunderbird know, anyway? Okay, so they have radar coverage on most of the map. Icons has radar coverage on the eastern half of the map, not really the western half of the map. Which sucks, because the western half of the map is the one they actually care about right now. <sighs> and this is kind of the last fight. Oh, and this this is what I mean. This is, like, two Thunderbirds coming in here, everything down, that's it. That's game. Like, Icons did not have to lose that game. At all. Ever. Icons had the advantage from moment one. They had an economic advantage from the very beginning of the game. They had a position with the, with the, scor the Scorchers they could have gone in. They had, you're going in with five Scorchers. Go in all the way or don't bother with that strategy at all. But it's like, they never really followed through on anything. They were always being timid. So yes, I get it. You don't want to lose units because you don't want to have your opponent reclaim. That's true. That's a very fair point. But... In that case, you either have to, especially in the early, early game, go for a more defensive opening, set up your units so that you're just defending against things, you're not using them for offense. Or, failing that, go for 
an offensive opening and then just attack and hope for the best. Going for an offensive opening and then not using it? That just leaves us with a bunch of units that could have been more metal extractors. Or more power plants. Like, those resources, yeah, you have a streaming economy, but those resources are still going into units as opposed to into other resources or going into workers or whatever else that could have been those. That could have been what those resources get, went into, was workers and power plants and other things you need to expand your infrastructure to be able to do better in the mid to late game. And it wasn't just the Scorchers, it was like the Rapiers didn't get used, or they weren't used to bypass the Scythes, because why use them to kill the Scythes? Who needs to kill the Scythes? The Scythes can't defend against you. There's no reason to kill them. Just bypass them. Just go around the base, smash up what you can. Take out the factory if possible, though Svatopik wasn't building too much. Take out the factory if you can. Take out the commander if you're really lucky. Just tear, tear that apart. I mean, yeah, the Razors will be built, but all the workers are up front. I mean, Svatopik, their workers seem to like to clump together. So he could have just gone for a bunch of stuff in the back of the base, dealt a fair amount of damage, and yeah, Razors would have come up and he would have had to escape. He might have lost a Rapier or two, but deal enough damage and it would be worth it. And then while dealing the damage, expand. Like, expand behind that. Make sure to just get a few more Metal Extractors you couldn't have otherwise gotten because now your opponent's distracted. Anyway, yeah, so a lot of it seemed to come down to Icons just not taking opportunities that presented themselves. Or setting up an opportunity and then not following through on it. That was the bigger thing. They set up their opportunities and then didn't follow through. They're just hedging. Hedging and hedging, not committing. So yeah, I don't know if there's going to be a tournament next week. It depends on whether or not people are there to organize it. I'm not going to be organizing it because I'll be casting it and trying to cast a tournament while orga or organize a tournament while casting it is pretty unwise. There's a lot of work that goes into organizing a tournament that you can't really do simultaneously with casting it. Same with playing it. Playing it at the same time would also be a problem. So anyway, that's... We'll see, maybe, but... I don't know. Official news will happen when official news happens. So, I hope you enjoyed this cast, and thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.